Thank you, Lord, for the word of God. Amen. Eller då tror du idag 26 nå? Today, the 26th. Yeah, the 26th of February. February. 2020. Praise the name of Jesus. Today I will speak about the truth and the false. Hallelujah. Amen. Like we have seen in uh, in First uh, John 2:15, um, love not the world. First John 2:15. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world. The love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. So, we have talked about this before, how uh, if we love the world, our spirit will change. The spirit of God, the love of the Father will not be in us. The love of the Father will not be in us. We we will have a different kind of spirit. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. But uh, a sign that we have the love of the Father in our heart, the love of God in our heart. This is to, I'm talking the love of the love of the Father is the love of God. If we love the world, we don't have the love of God in our heart. That's obvious from the scripture. We don't have the love of God in our heart. But a sign that we have the love of God in our heart, we can read from First um, Corinthians, chapter thirteen. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 6. And it's written about the love, love, the love of God. And in verse 6 it does, that's just one example of the love. The love of God does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. That is a sign. First Corinthians. That's a that's a, a, a sign. That's a fruit of the spirit. That is that we love, we rejoice in truth. That is a good sign that we have the love of God in our heart, that we have the love of the Father in our heart. And this is a very important fruit, a very important sign, a very important thing to look for if somebody is with God or not. And that is if they love, if they will rejoice with the truth. And the problem today is that many people will not rejoice with uh, the truth. They will maybe instead despise the truth. They will fight the truth. They will persecute the messenger who comes with the truth. Why is it so? A reason for this may be because these people love the world and their spirit has changed. The moment a person loves the world their spirit will change and the fruit of this change may be 
that they will despise, hate, persecute the truth. A reason why this is so is because today many people, Christians, people going in the name of Christians, are being trained to love the world, are being trained to be committed to lies and deceptions. We need to take this matter very serious. We need to commit our heart each and single, each and every day to Jesus, to the truth. Jesus is the truth. To give up all things that is from the flesh to follow Jesus. And you see from the flesh comes the lust of the flesh, the lust of money, the lust of riches, the lust of power. Um, lies and deceptions it's from the world it's from the devil and when we love something else than God we give our heart to something else than God we will lose the love of the Father in our heart and our spirit will change therefore God is saying but Jesus is saying Matthew 7 15 till 20 Matthew 7 15 to 20. <clears throat> Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous, ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles even so every good tree bears good fruit but a bad tree bears bad fruit a good tree cannot bear bad fruit nor can a bad tree bear good fruit every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire therefore by their fruits you will know them and he's saying, continuing, saying, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. And you can see here, those who are not worthy of the kingdom of God are people who practice lawlessness. People who love the world. People who are committed to something else than the truth, than Christ, than God. They're giving their heart to something else. And by the fruit we shall know them. And one of the main fruits we can look for, and that is a fruit of somebody being a Christian, really, a true believer, a disciple of Jesus, is if they will rejoice with the truth. Or if they will persecute it, hate it, despise it, be angry with the truth. That is a very major sign or fruit to look for. So beware of false prophets. So first of all, we look for if they really are having the love of the Father in their heart. If they are really true believers. If they love God with all their heart. This is the, one of the fruit we can look for. But if we see somebody who seems to be committed to a lie, to deceptions, to the world, full of pride in the things of the world. I was just looking on the internet 
of a man who is calling himself a man of God. He's a man of God. And he's saying, I'm not a preacher. I'm a man of God. A man of God, he says, is a bigger and higher position than a preacher. But when I look in the Bible, in the New Testament, I can find no such thing. In the Bible, we find, we can read Ephesians 4, 11 to 16. Ephesians 4, 11 to 16. And there it is written about the gifts God gave to the church. And He Himself, God, or Jesus, gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of man in that cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ. Hallelujah. This is the Bible. And uh, it is scary to me to see people coming away from the truth and not seem to be committed to the truth. By the <laughs> fruit we shall know them. We can look at what they practice. Do they practice righteousness or do they practice lawlessness? By their fruit we shall know them. And you will definitely get to know them if you get so close to them that you be, are able to speak the truth because then you will see the reaction if it's a reaction of pride, of uh, feeling higher than you and better than you or or uh, this anger or, or something like that so this is what the Bible says about the church and about the positions about the gifts God has given to the church there is not written anywhere in the Bible that God gave some to be man of God and then you have apostles. It seems like somebody thinks they are men of God and they are even above apostles. And that should be a sign to us that we need to be careful with these people. We need to be careful if it's an obvious deception. And if people seem to have an obvious inclination toward greed and money. We should be careful if they change the Word of God to fit their greed, to deceive the people, to steal from the church. Uh, we should be careful. Beware of false prophets. Beware of false apostles. Beware of false pastors. See, the idea of pastor even in the Bible seemed to be very much different from what we see today. People today who call themselves pastors are often only uh, leaders or, or CEOs of religious organizations. And that's a different aspect than what the Bible is teaching, as far as I can see. 
And when people give themselves over to a lie, if they love the world, if they love a lie, if they're committed to something that is not true, they will not have the love of the Father and they may change their behavior from being a pure Christian to being a persecutor of disciples. Today many people are occupied only by building their own empires and to be head of a church instead of being the gift they are supposed to be to the church where Jesus is the head. Beware of these people, beware of false prophets, false apostles, false pastors. By their fruit you shall know them. We need to look for the fruit, we need to look for what they are occupied with. Are they occupied with the truth, with knowing the truth, with finding the truth, with speaking the truth? Or are they occupied with building their own empires? by pride, by the lust of the flesh, by the greed of money. What are they seeking? What are they occupied with? We should be careful, we should beware of false prophets because those who have the wrong fruit, they will be cut off. It is written that that's why we should beware of them. Don't believe every person, but test them test what they are preaching test look at the fruit because those who are occupied with unrighteousness they will be cut off and we must not go with them if somebody loves Jesus he will rejoice with the truth he will be seeking the truth. Many can be deceived, but if you have the love of the Father in your heart, if you have not given yourself to a lie or to the world, you will still have this desire for the truth and your spirit will rejoice with the truth. And next, I will also say, beware of false gospels, false teachings. We need to beware of that because false gospels, people preaching false gospels will be cursed. It's written in Galatians 1, 6 to 8. Galatians. One six to eight. I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. And we have said before, as we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be accursed. So we should be aware, beware of false gospels and, and false teachings. And, and I'm thinking then specifically about the most basic things in the Bible. Because today there are false gospel. People are preaching a false salvation. Some people preach that you are saved in baptism as a child. Or you are saved through membership in a church. 
you sign membership in a religious organization and then you become a member that is a false gospel because you don't get a member of any kind of body by signing a membership card you become a member of the body of Christ when you give your heart to Jesus with all your heart when you love Jesus with all your heart then you are connected to him in, in the spirit and you will have a good spirit the spirit of God eternal life so many people even preach that you're saved by stretching up your hand and receiving Jesus what well, to receive Jesus is to receive love for him is to start to follow him you cannot receive Jesus without following him with all your heart and today you see this is a false self we need to look for this because some people preach a false salvation and some people preach a false church they preach that a religious organization of the world is a church when did, when, can anyone tell me, when did the church, or when did a religious organization become a church? When? It probably started in the year 350 something after Christ when some people started the Catholic Church. That may be when it started. A religious organization or group became a church but the church in the Bible is the body of Christ and God gave gifts to the body of Christ for the edifying of the body God never made a religious organization a church this is a false gospel it's a false gospel because they preach that you can become member. You can become a member of a church with a different name than Jesus. A religious organization registered maybe with the state. And if you ask somebody who is the head of this church, they will say, is this person or that person the founder of that organization? He's the head of that church. It's a false Christ. You see, Jesus is the church. Jesus is the church. And we belong to Jesus. When we give our heart fully to Him, we are connected to God in, in the Spirit. But some people want to steal our commitment from God and make us be committed to the world, to a worldly organization called the church. Dressed, it's the world dressed in sheep's clothing. It's a worldly organization with a leader, a CEO, and a board members in this religious organization. You see, all these religious organizations that are called churches, they have a CEO and they have board members and every year they have to have these board meetings. They have to. The state is demanding that. You have to have board meetings every now and then. And they call the CEO pastor. And they call the board members elders. And it's a, re it's a religious, worldly organization that is dressed as church. It comes in sheep's clothing. But this organization, these organizations are trying to steal your commitment from God to that organization. And they want you to give your heart to the organization, to become a member of the world of a worldly organization 
and they want you to be committed to give your money to the world, to a religious organization, a worldly organization dressed as church. And they're deceiving the Christians into committing themselves to the world. Today a false church is being preached <clears throat> and we should beware of false gospel. It's a false gospel. It's a false church. False salvation. False church. And a false grace is being preached. And false giving. The teaching people to walk in the flesh. Love not the world. The lust of the flesh is of the world. Love not the world. Teaching people to give their tithing. Not to be led by the Spirit. God is calling us today to walk in the Spirit and in the truth. But these many people try to make us commit or giving to the world, not to Jesus, not to the Spirit, not to be led by the Spirit and truth, but by the world, by command, by rule, and this is false giving. This is a false gospel. Really, it is a false gospel. And when people teach that you can <coughs> that grace comes. I'm baptized as a child. I'm confirmed when I'm 14 or 15. I go to I'm a member of the Catholic Church or the Methodist Church or the Baptist Church or the Pentecostal Church. I've received Jesus because I said yes to Jesus. I accepted what He did for me. Many people preach that you receive, you are becoming a Christian when you accept what Jesus did for you. You see, this is a false gospel. It is true, of course, that we believe in what Jesus did for us on the cross, that we have faith in what He did for us. But our response to that is not just, okay, I will accept that gift. Thank you. No. To receive the gift of God is to receive love for the truth. Is to be committed to the truth. To receive the gift of God is to give your heart to Him. This is true salvation. Then you enter the grace of God. But many are thought that you through baptism or through a, a false conversion that you receive grace and then you should just start to claim your blessing. <clears throat> start to speak co positive confession. By his stripes I'm healed. By this I'm healed. And but you don't enter the grace of God without fully committing to Jesus. Then you can claim your blessing. <coughs> I was watching on the internet the other day about... There is a religious organization. I will not mention name. But there is a religious organization that is called the church. Where people are members but where they are strictly controlling how much people are giving. And people to enter the church, this religious organization, they need to have ID cards. And if you are not shown to faithfully give enough to that organization, your ID card is cancelled. You are not allowed to enter the building. Only those who fulfill their giving are allowed to enter the building. What is this? We need to look at the fruit. Beware of false preachers and false prophets and false apostles and false churches and false salvation and false giving. It's a gospel that is false. 
that's not the Bible. God is calling us to walk in the Spirit and in the truth. That is Jesus. Jesus is Spirit and truth. And those who serve Him, those who worship Him, should worship in Spirit and in truth. They should serve in the Spirit of truth. To, to worship God is to serve Him. When, when we serve Him, we worship Him by serving Him. And we should serve in spirit and truth. We should be led by the spirit of God. But some people are committed to a wrong spirit. You see, the spirit of God is always in agreement with the truth. And if we are committed to a spirit who is basically going in a different way, in a different direction than the truth, And that also is wrong. Jesus is the truth. His word is the truth. And when we are committed to the truth, the truth shall set us free. But if we are giving our heart to falseness and lies and to these false preachers, people don't read the Bible themselves often. They just blindly believe in these pastors and the leaders and the deceivers and the man of God they're not preachers only, they're men of God they're elevating themselves to a position that they're almost like I've heard about one person that people worship almost like a God like I, I remember Branham there are many people, he was having so much power with God that people are worshiping him And when people elevate themselves to such a position that they are a man of God, I'm not a preacher only, I'm a man of God. Then it's like people need to almost... There's something wrong. <coughs> we should be very, be very careful. Because people who commit iniquity they will be cut off that's why we should not follow them but we should be true to God in our own heart and second because second Thessalonians just to show you that to receive Jesus is not just to accept what he did for us to receive Jesus is to receive love for the truth second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 10 to 12, or from, read from verse 8. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth, and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all powers, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. You see here, the only way to get saved is to receive the love of the truth. Because everyone who do not receive the love of the truth will perish. And with all unrighteous deception among those who perish. There will come all kinds of unrighteous deception to steal away our commitment from God. From the love of the truth. And to love here is not a feeling about the truth. It's about a commitment and faithfulness to the truth. Faithfulness to God. Faithfulness to Jesus. Among those who perish because they do not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. We sh God has a load. God has a load. And righteous deception to come among the world, in the world, in the church. So that those who perish because they didn't and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish. 
because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie. God will allow strong delusions to come in the world and in the church so that those who do not receive the love of the truth, they will believe these lies and they will give their heart to the deceptions and they will perish. That they should believe the lie that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. They will perish and God is allowing it. All the deceptions that is going on today, church, salvation, whatever, false church, false grace, false giving, positive confession. The only thing you need to do is start to confess positive. <coughs> the only need, the thing you need to do to get rich is to give more. Give gross. You should give from the gross of your income. It's all a lie. It's not in the Bible. Beware of false gospel because those have been allowed to be here so that those who do not receive love for the truth <coughs> will be caught up in it and perish. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.